and uh, uh, to be a Muslim, you can't live in fear. You see, if if you are Allah's slave, and Allah's a good master, then the uh, the indication, the implication is that Allah's going to take care of you. Now, I read uh, this uh, this book, uh, Jilani, uh, by uh, the Sheikh Jilani, written 800 years ago, and Sheikh Jilani. Uh, says well that's what he that's what Allah does with his his friends his slaves he he doesn't differentiate between slave and friend because once you become a slave you're also a friend of Allah you see so if you're a friend of Allah then there's nothing to fear because Allah's going to protect you even if Allah asks you to come to a position where you die being a slave you see so if you're going to live in fear of yeah. Um, you see, the, 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 the traditionalists have imposed this fear because they, they prevent, they always talk about innovation, innovation, you can't make an innovation. Well, who innovated all these things to begin with, you see? You know, the Madhav still can't agree on how best it is to pray. And this is 1,400 years later, which means that they didn't agree with each other to begin with. You see, so if they can't agree with other, each other to begin with, then how is it possible that they're guided? Because there's only one master. And the, and the master is not going to tell four different men to do the same thing four different ways. Unless there's a good reason for that. And if there is a good reason for it, they will all agree that this is the reason I'm doing this, this is the reason I'm doing it, and, and they will they won't contend with each other. So you know, and the sex, sectarianism would not occur. So living in fear is not a sign of guidance. So people who are fearful of such um, knowledge, you see, or such an approach to knowledge are not in guidance. They have not yet become Allah's slave. They're toying with the idea. They imagine that they're Allah's slave. To be all a slave means that uh, you've got a. I, I've told this to people many times. Look, to be all a slave means you've got to be. Um, you've got to be walking, you know, on a place, and then Allah says, "Okay, you're at the edge. Take another step." You see. To be all a slave means that if Allah says to do that, he, you have to know He's going to catch you. And if you don't believe that, you can't be all a slave. You're still living in fear. You, you don't have the courage. You don't have the courage to accept the truth. And if you don't have the courage to accept the truth, Allah's not going to give it to you. And uh, the Quran makes it very, very clear that Allah chooses whomever he wants to guide, not who you choose, not who the traditional choose. Not the traditionalists have nothing to whatsoever to do with Allah choosing someone to guide. You see, if and Dr. Hani has shown very various places in the Quran where Allah can choose someone who has no knowledge of the Prophet, no knowledge of Islam at, at all, and can still be guided by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And I don't see traditionalists acknowledging this. And if they do, they don't talk about it very much. You see, now you you get people like um, Hamza Yusuf who will get up on stage and you know hold hands with the Pope or the Bishop or the Dalai Lama. But I'm going to tell you right now that most people who do that, they're doing it for a political reason, and they're also suffering from myopia. Because if you hold hands with the Dalai Lama, you're holding hands with someone who commits serious jerk, serious jerk. And if you read my book on sexology, you'll find out what the nature of this shirk is. And it has everything to do with gender bending. Okay, so, and if you hold hands with bishops of the Roman Catholic Church and Jesuits, that's even more serious shirk. So if you're going to do that, it doesn't matter how much moral good you can spew forth from your, from your mouth. Anyone can stand up and put forth, uh, you know, really good moral advice. But spiritual advice that leads to true guidance is a different matter. And people are, who are truly guided 
would not be holding hands with Dalai Lama and the Pope or any of his representatives. They would not do that. They would not uh, invite themselves to stand and, and, and someplace and offer a public prayer together with these people. No, 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 no. It would not happen, you see. But there are people outside those official institutions who are members of smaller societies, such as the Sioux Indian and their shamans, they're pure monotheists and they have received guidance. Oh, but why were they destroyed, Dr. Allah, Dr. Omar? Well, they were destroyed because they left their guidance, just like any other nation. They left it, you see. I got into trouble with some Canadian uh, tribes uh, uh, last year sometime because I confronted them with their savage treatment of prisoners of war. They tie them to the post, start burning them to death, rip their liver out, rip their heart out, and eat it. And yet they claim to be monotheists. Well, that's, this is not, that kind of savagery is worship of the self. That's descent into the hell of the nafs, into the jinn. <clears throat> The world of the jinn and even worse the world of the shaitan you see which is inner and psychological so people who have this myopia and who lack this courage they can't accept this kind of knowledge and allah won't give it to them until they're ready to be his slave to be his servant to trust in his guidance, to do whatever it is that he says. And Allah will give that to you. Allah will talk to you now. The angels are there. They talk to you in dreams and visions. If you're not getting dreams and visions, you ain't talking to God. You're just going to the mosque and bowing down like every other every other fool who thinks that they have relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, 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 no. No, no, God forbid, God forbid.